okay guys so welcome back again so in this video let's see that how do we dockerize a mongodb and node.js express application using docker compose and for the purposes of this tutorial i would be using my own repo here that is a node.js rest api so basically it's a simple rest api which uses mongodb as a database and if you want to follow along with me you can simply clone this repo and then you can continue ahead with me so before creating any containers for this node.js application and mongodb let's see that how do we run this application on localhost so here is the repo that i cloned on my local machine here and here we see that the app.js is the entry point for this application and if we have a look at the package.json file here we have two scripts that is the start script and the dev script so the start script simply do, does node app.js and the dev script uses node mod which restarts the application when it sees changes inside the .js files by default and the dependencies it uses is the .env, the express, HTTP errors, mongoose for mongodb connections or the ORM for mongodb and the dev dependency is this nodemon. So let's try to run this application. So to run this application we simply need to do npm run dev to run it in dev mode and we see that the application is started here and we see that mongodb is connected and if we go to this rest.http file here so basically this is the rest client which i am which i am using and it is an extension inside vs code which simply uh, allows you to do api calls inside from inside your vs code so if we simply make a request to our index route we see that the result we get is that that the message it works and the env name is true limital and where this env name is coming from it is coming from the env file so the env file contains some default values here for the port that is on which port to run this application and then the mongodb uri which is simply mongodb localhost port 27017 because currently mongodb is running on localhost and i am connected to that instance of mongodb and not uh, and we have not touched docker as of now i'm simply explaining what the application does and here we provide in the db name that also comes from the environment variables or the env file and that is called mydb and then there is one more name here that is the env name and that says truly methyl and that is what we were seeing here when we made a call to this index route here and that index route is handled inside our app.js file so let's open the app.js file and we see let me close this so this is the this is the thing which we are getting here from the index route that is message and it works so now we have one more route here that is the products route which is simply present inside our route file here that is product.route.js and here we have a typical rest api so let's go to the rest.http and let's see if we want to get all the products because this api is for creating all the products or for creating a product or reading a product or getting a list of all the products to delete a product and to update a product so let's try to get a list of all the products here so we see that currently we do not have any product inside our database so therefore we are getting an empty array back so let's quickly create a new product by making a post request to this route or to this endpoint and with this content here that is the name and price so currently it should be changed to macbook pro like uh, this is the new stuff here so macbook pro 14.2 and the price is 19.99 so let's create this product here so we see that the product is created and at the same time let's create the 16.2 here so 2499 and let me create one more product here so now we see that we have created two products and if we try to get a list of all the products we see that we get a back our two products here so now let's quickly grab the id of one product and currently i'm simply demoing you the application so if you do not want to uh, see the complete demo of this application then you can skip to the chapter where we begin dockerizing this application but here for those who do not want to skip this part just uh, just stay with me so to get a product by id we can simply paste in the id here that is to get a product by id and we can get a product by id and if we want to update the product by id so let's see that we want to update this product and suppose we want to change some um, or we want to uh, let's say change the price from uh, 1999 uh, to 2199 so 2199 and if you update the product we see that we updated the product and if we get back a list of all the products we see that we have this product here that is the price is updated so let's try to delete this products by making a delete request here so let's delete a product and we see that the delete request succeeded and if we try to get a list of all the products 
then we see that that product has been deleted. So this is a very basic simple REST API based on Node.js and MongoDB and I want to dockerize this application because currently what is happening is this that MongoDB is running locally on my machine or locally on my system and it, it, it is running on port 27017. So let me clear out the screen. So if I want to connect to MongoDB on port, on port 27017, I can simply press enter. So we see, and uh, this is a new thing here that is Mongosh thing here. So initially we were used to use Mongo to connect to the Mongo shell, but now we see that we need to use Mongosh though Mongo also works. And we see that we are inside this test database. So if I do show DBs, so we see that my DB is present here and we must be having the content there as well. So let me exit out. So now let me clear out the screen. So now let's start dockerizing this application. So firstly, before we continue, let's see what Docker version is installed on my PC or on my Mac. And we see that here we have this Docker version running 20.10.8. And it is for a reason is this that I'm showing you the Docker version because the Docker Compose thing which we are going to use is uh, has a different API than the previous one because the previous, previous one uses docker-compose. And now we can simply use docker space and compose. So this is the Docker version that you should be on and to install Docker, I have already made a couple of videos that is how do you install Docker on Mac or on Windows. So you can go and watch that video and I would be linking those videos uh, in the description. So before we continue ahead, let's go to our application once again and let's see that what we are going to use. So to Dockerize this application, we would be needing two containers here, one for the Node.js application and another container for the MongoDB database. because if you want to dockerize any application, then each individual application should be running in its own container. That is, it is confined in its own space. Node.js container would only be responsible for running our Node.js application and MongoDB container would only be responsible for running MongoDB inside that container. So therefore, we would be needing to create two containers. So without wasting any time, let's get started and let's try to create our container. So first, let me stop this application and let me clear out the screen. And now what I'll do, I'll simply create a couple of files here inside this folder that is in my current directory that is in my root folder here. So firstly, we would be creating a file here that would be called docker file. And basically this docker file would be used to container, containerize this Node.js application. And the only reason of creating this docker file is that, that we want to run this application that is this Node.js application in its own container. So therefore we are creating a docker file here. And now we need to create another file here and that is docker compose, which starts all the necessary containers to run this application. That is this application requires Node.js application to be started and MongoDB to be started in another container. So therefore we are simply creating one more file that is called docker compose. So let me create that file as well. So docker hyphen compose dot YAML. So either you can use YAML or you can simply use YML. And it's a YAML file here that is docker hyphen compose dot YAML. And let me also create one more file and that is called dot docker ignore. And I would be coming to each and every file that why I'm creating each of these files. So the file name would be dot docker ignore. And as the name suggests, it's simply like uh, it's uh, this file sim is simply like the dot get ignore file. That is whatever we want to ignore, we can put it inside this docker ignore file. So now before doing anything inside this docker file or inside this docker compose.yml, let's go to docker hub. So here is this docker hub and here what we are going to use, we are going to use two images here. That is the node.js image and the mongodb image. So I've opened them already here inside my tab. So this is the image which we are going to use. We are going to note, uh, use the node image to create a container from this node image. And here you can use any version which is there, but I would be telling you that what version you should use in a moment. And for MongoDB, I would be simply using this MongoDB image, uh, which is again the official image and it is on Docker Hub here. And again, for the version which you should use, uh, you can use, uh, there are n number of versions which you can use, but we, were, we are going to use the latest version. So let's uh, again go to this node image. So basically what this node image provides us, it simply provides us a container in which you can run your node application. But 
to create a container with the node.js application we need to create a docker file first that is that docker file would be necessary or that docker file would be responsible for creating a container that would be able to run our node.js application so let's go to here and here the first thing we need to do even before touching the docker compose.yml file we need to create this docker file that is this docker file would be responsible for running that node.js container that or the node.js application container so the thing which we need to do we need to firstly choose the base image so for that we say base or for that we say from and here i am simply providing in that from node image that is the image we just saw that that was the node image we are using that image as the base image and from this image we are going to create our own image with this application and the version which we are going to use we are simply going to use the alpine version here though you can you, you could have also used the latest version here but using alpine is like more suitable for n number of applications and it is because that is the image size of this container would be like way less if you are going to use the latest uh, version here so i would always recommend that you should always use the node with the alpine version and you can also check out docker hub if you want to use any other version but i prefer to use node alpine and then what we want to do here we want to create a working directory inside this container because each of the containers is a linux instance because this would be running alpine linux so here we need to set the working directory for this application or where this application would be running from inside this container that we are going to create from this docker file so we need to specify the work directory so the work directory so work to would be forward slash user forward slash source forward slash app and again that this path can be any path it depends on you that what path you want to use i am simply calling this part as forward slash so users forward slash source forward slash app in which our application would be copied or would be running from so it is completely or uh, it is it is completely up to you that which path you want to use and now inside this folder what we want to copy the first thing we want to copy is the package log.json file and the package.json file so that we can install the dependencies and then later on we would be copying all the files present here to this application directory inside our container so the first thing we, we need to do is we need to copy the file here that is package star.json to dot here that is now since our working directory is set to this uh, this path here so dot represents this path here we do not need to specify this whole path again because now the current working directory is set to this path here inside the container so we can simply say copy package star dot json to this path here and now what would happen is this that the package log dot json file and the package dot json file would be copied to this this directory and now what we want to do we want to run a command here and that is run npm ci and in most of the other tutorials you would see that people do npm install and that is a bad practice because we want to install the exact same dependencies that were running locally on our system or or what i mean is this that whatever version we have installed inside or whatever version is specified inside this package log.json file so that version should be installed on our container also so therefore we are go going to use npm ci and here ci simply simply means continuous integration though if you would have used npm install here that is instead of ci if you if you would have used npm install this would also work but that is a bad practice you should al always do npm ci to install the dependencies and now what we want to do we want to copy each and every file present in this directory that is this application to this working directory because then only we would be able to run our application from this container so for that what i am going to do i am going to say copy dot to dot that is copy each and every file from this directory to this directory but now you might be wondering that we already copied this package.json file and we also have this node modules folder here and this file run command that is npm ci would also be creating a node modules folder here inside this user source app so uh, like it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a mismatch here so what can we do we can go to this docker ignore file that is whatever files would be present inside this docker ignore file would be not copied whenever we are using copy dot to dot that is whatever files and folders are present inside this dot docker ignore file would not be copied to our container so let's open this docker ignore file and here what we are going to copy 
or we are going to ignore is firstly we are going to ignore the node modules folder so we can say node modules and then also we do not want to copy this docker file to our container because it is only for our local machine here so we can specify here docker file also that is we do not want to copy this docker file to our uh, container and then we also do not want to copy the docker ignore file because that is only for local machine so we can say docker file or not docker file it should be docker ignore and then we also do not want to copy this docker compose hyphen yaml file because this is responsible for starting containers that is the node.js container and the mongodb container and it has nothing to do with the application here or the node.js application in itself so we can again ignore this file here that is docker hyphen compose dot yaml simply like this so these are the files which we are going to ignore and now if we go back to our uh, docker file we see that we have these uh, this thing here that is we have copied all the files apart from the files that are present in docker ignore and the first thing which we need to do or whenever this container would start or whenever this node.js application container would start what command we want to run so we can simply say npm start so for that we need to pass in a command so cmd and here in box brackets we pass in the command and we say npm and start so basically you can also use this thing here that is uh, let me show it to you so if i comment it out you can also use this command like this that is npm start uh, like this but again from the reference of docker file i saw that using this uh, this way is uh, recommended though this can work also but again this way is recommended to start the application from your container so this is a docker file that is created and now if i uh, want to run this container that is if we want to start this container we can simply say docker build and then uh, let me clear out the screen first and let me scroll up so to build this image what we can simply say we can simply say docker build dot and it would simply create this image but that's not what we want to do we want to start this image only when mongodb is already also present inside our container we want to start both the containers simultaneously that is the node.js application container and the mongodb container so that the node.js application container would be able to connect to the mongodb container so for that what we are going to use we are going to use the docker compose.yaml file to start both the containers so let me minimize this thing here and now inside this docker compose firstly we need to provide in the version so the version typically what you are going to use you are going to use 3.9 or whatever it is though it is not uh, required i've read somewhere that this uh, mentioning of version is not required but it is always advisable to pass in this version number here and there is no reason for you to provide any version number that starts from 2 you should be at least using version number 3 or version number 3.9 that i saw in the docker reference here so this should be good to go that is version number 3.9 and then what services we want to start basically services represents our containers and here we are going to start two containers one is the mongodb container and other is the node.js container so to define the container we would say services that is these services we want to start so the uh, and to make a comment here i would simply say mongodb service that is this container or this service is responsible for starting the mongodb container and now we need to give the service a name so let's give uh, let's give this service a name that is called mongo underscore db and again this name can be any name that is mongodb you can you can simply call it mongo you can call it mongodb like this you can call it mongo like this but i simply call it mongo underscore db to make it more explicit and then optionally you can provide in a container name so container name would be like let's say db container so again this thing is completely optional if you do not uh, provide in a container name then mongodb would be started uh, with the name of mongodb that is the service name but if you provide in a container name then the service would be started with this name that is db container so this thing is completely optional here so now to start this container what image we are going to use we are going to use the mongo image so we can say image that is we need to provide in an image here and the image we are going to use mongo and then what version do we want to use we want to use the latest version of mongodb though if you want to use you can simply specify here 4.2 i guess that is the latest version of mongodb but here i am simply putting in latest here 
and then we can provide in one more property here that is the restart policy that is if this container fails for some reason then what should be done it should be restarted always that is if this container fails for some reason at any point of time then the container should be restarted so therefore i am providing an always here and now there is one more thing that is volumes and uh, like this and basically whenever you start a container and you stop a container so if you do not provide any volumes then whenever the container is stopped then all the data that is present inside that container would be removed and you would not be getting any uh, your data would not be persisted whenever you restart your container so it is highly advisable that you use volumes that would be a part on your local machine or that would be a volume or a folder in which your files that are the database files inside this container would be mapped on your local machine so therefore to provide in volumes i can simply say mongodb mongo underscore db colon and this volume would be mapped to data forward slash data forward slash db because by default mongodb always stores all of its database files inside this folder that is forward slash data forward slash db and this should be exactly same as this you cannot change it like forward slash db forward slash data it should be exactly like this that is forward slash data forward slash db and this volume that is this mongodb volume we are going to create in a moment this volume doesn't exist as of yet though i could have provided a path that is a relative path to this repository here or to this current folder like i could have said this thing here that is this uh, dot forward slash mongodb but that is not advisable but instead we should be creating a volumes that are managed by docker itself so we can say it like this that is mongodb colon forward slash data forward slash db and the volume we would be creating in a moment so this is all what you need to do to create a mongodb service and some of you might be wondering that why i have not mapped the ports and it is for a specific reason and i would tell you why that when to map ports and when not to map ports so therefore i have skipped mapping ports and now let's create another service that would be the node.js api service and i am simply calling it api here and it would be called node.js api service or container here simply like this and the name i've given to this api service or this api container or this node.js api container would be api and here only to show you the difference between providing in a container name and not providing in a container name i am not providing in a container name here and now to create an image for for this uh, for this uh, node.js container what we want to use we want to use this docker file somehow that are that is present inside this current directory because we created this docker file to build a node.js application image from this application using the base image that is node alpine so what we can do we can go here that is inside this docker compose.yml and instead of using image here what we want to do we want to simply build here we want to simply use this property here that is build which would simply build the docker file that is present inside this folder here and here i have simply specified the path of this docker file and since our docker file is present in the same directory as this docker compose.yml file so i am simply providing here dot that is look for the docker file where this docker compose.yml file is present and now we want to expose some ports from this container to our local machine so we can say ports that is we want to access this application somehow on a local machine so what we can do we can map a port on a local machine let's say 3000 to be mapped to 3000 on our container or uh, just to show you the difference uh, let's change it to 4000 that is 4000 port on our local machine would be mapped to port number 3000 on our container machine so this is it and again i am skipping one part here that is the volumes and i would be telling you that when to use a volume inside the node.js api service and what not to use and it is only recommended for development purposes that is whenever you want to develop an application using docker compose so then only we are going to provide in volumes here and we would be coming to the volumes later on in the video and now we need to provide in some environment variables here that is this application needs some environment variables so as we can see we need to pass in the port number here the mongodb uri the database name and the name here so let me simply copy this uh, thing from here and let me go to my docker file here or not this docker compose.yml file so now to specify the environment variables we can simply paste in those variables here and let me skew them here 
So the port number which we want to provide here, that is on which port the application should run. It should be running on port uh, this thing here, that is port 3000. And then we need to provide in the MongoDB URI. So here we do not provide in the MongoDB URI like this, that is MongoDB localhost port 27017 because localhost is a localhost. Container is not localhost. Container is a different host. Now to connect this application to this MongoDB container, what we can do, we can simply copy the service name from here. That is this MongoDB and instead of localhost, we can provide in MongoDB here. And again, this thing here, and we, we need to have a space here. Uh, so this would work. So this should be colon and in space. And this name that is MongoDB can be this DB container also because we provided a container name here. So either you can pass in MongoDB here, that is the name of the service here, or you can pass in the container name here, that is DB container. So it's up to you that what you want to pass here. I simply want to pass here MongoDB. So let me pass here MongoDB. And then we are simply connecting on port 27017 because inside this container also, MongoDB is running on this port, that is 27017. So therefore, the complete URI of MongoDB would be MongoDB colon forward slash forward slash MongoDB, the name of the service or the container name and then colon 27017. And then we need to provide in the database name. So the database name can be this MyDB also or it can be any database name which you want to provide here as an environment variable because eventually this environment variable would be used inside our application. And then we need to provide in a name here and it is again only for demonstration purposes that is how do we provide in an environment name here so let's simply provide here true limiter like this and again inside our env file we have a name like this so therefore we are providing in a name environment variable here and now these are the all environment variables which we need to provide to this container here and now we need to provide in one more flag here or one more property here for the service here that is this application or this container depends on this mongodb container that is even if this container is started and this container isn't started then there is no use of uh, making this container start because this application depends on mongodb because the data is coming from mongodb itself so therefore this container should be started only after mongodb container has started so it simply means that firstly start this mongodb container and then only start this node.js api service container so we can say depends on like this and here we need to pass in the service name so we can simply say mongo underscore db, db like this and now that's all what you need to do and there is only one thing remaining is this that we need we need to create a volume by this name that should be managed by docker so that our data is persisted even if we sh um, even if we shut down our container so to do that what we need to do we need to go at the very first level here that is just below the services level here and we need to create volumes here so we can say volumes and it should be at the very start here not there otherwise it won't work and then the volume which we need to create, we need to create a volumes by this name that is MongoDB. So let me simply copy this MongoDB here and let me simply paste it here. And then we simply put colon here and then some options here. That is currently an empty object here. Even though if you do not provide this, it also works, but you can simply provide it here like this. So that's all what we need to do. So let's try to start this uh, thing that is start both the containers and let's see that if we are able to access this API service on port 4000. So let me open my terminal here, integrated terminal, and let me clear out. So now to build the containers, what we need to do, we need to use Docker Compose. So we can say Docker Compose up like this, and we can pass in a flag here that is hyphen D to start the containers in detached mode. But I want to see all the output coming from containers, so I'm not going to pass this flag here. And if you are using Docker Compose previously, then you would have used Docker hyphen Compose up. But I guess that is deprecated. So we are simply going to use Docker Compose up. And now as soon as I press enter, we see that we get this uh, error here that is environment is not allowed. And that is because we have a typo here. It should be environment like this. And now let me clear out and let me use this Docker Compose up again. And now we are building this image that is from this Docker file. Oh, we see that we build the image here firstly. Oh, the worker here is set to this path here. Then we copied this thing here and then we uh, run the npm ci command and we copied all the things here. And then this image is created. 
and now we started this container here that is a db container firstly initially because that is what we have specified here inside our docker compose file that is first start the db container and then start the api container because this api container depends on mongodb or this db container here and this is the name which we are getting here db container if we would have we would not have provided in a container name here then instead of db container we would be getting mongodb here now let's scroll down and let me increase the font size here or the zoom or the let me increase the window size here and if we scroll down we should have our api container also running here that is node.js rest api api1 and if we scroll down here we see that we get this message here that is mongo uh, mongoose connected to database mongodb connected so now the moment of truth that is we have specified or we have mapped a port that is 3000 on the container to our local machine on port 4000 so let's see that if we are able to access this uh, port on uh, or able to access this application on localhost port 4000 so let's go to a browser here and let's try to open that thing here that is localhost port 4000 and we see that we get back this message here that is it works and the env name is truly method and that's what is specified here inside our docker file so let's try to work with our api using this rest client here that is rest.http so we need to rename this to 4000 because now we are using 4000 on our local machine so let's make our request here we see that we are getting this uh, response back if we try to get a list of all the products we do not get any products because there aren't any products so let's create a new product we get this product so let's get a list of all the products we are getting this thing here so we know that our containers are up and working and we are getting some response back so let's try to stop both the containers so let's do and before stopping the containers let me show you one more thing that is if we do docker so docker ps we see that no containers are running here and if we do docker ps hyphen a like this we see that we have two stopped containers here that is the node.js rest api api container here and the mongodb latest container so now to start both the containers again what we need to do we need to simply say docker compose up like this and our both the containers would be up and running in no time so con the containers are running and now if we want to make a request again we see that we get back a list of all the products and the data is persisted because or let me show you one more thing so let me stop both the containers here and let me do simply do uh, let me clear out the screen and let me simply do docker ps we have no running containers and if we do docker ps hyphen a we see that we have these two containers that are stopped so what if we want to delete both the containers so let's uh, delete both the containers so we can say docker docker remove and then the container name because we can pass in a container name like this the container is removed and we are simply going to remove this container also that is the mongodb container so docker rm this thing here and the container id so if we do docker ps hyphen a we see that no containers are present and uh, if we simply do that is docker ps that is there are no running containers so what would happen if we want to start this application all over again would this data be persisted and i say that this data would be persisted because of this thing here that is inside a docker compose.yml file so let me close this thing here that is inside a docker compose.yml file we have created a volume for this mongodb container that is this volume and this volume is managed by docker so i guess that the data would be persisted if we want to start the containers again so we can simply say docker compose up hyphen d to start the containers in detached mode because right now we do not want to see any output from the containers so we can start the containers in detached mode so we see that both the containers started and if we do docker ps we see that we have these two containers running so let me minimize the terminal and let's try to access our api here and let's try to get a list of all the products and we see that the data is persisted even though we have manually deleted all both the containers but still the data is persisted inside the mongodb container because of the volume we created so now there is uh, one more thing here so let's go to our terminal and let's try to access uh, this uh, uh, mongodb 
container that is running here but there is one problem here that is we cannot access this mongodb container from our local machine and that is because we have not mapped any ports from our mongodb container to our local machine so to do that what we need to do firstly we need to stop both the containers here that is docker compose down to uh, stop all the bring down all the containers here and now we need to go to the docker compose.yaml file because currently if we want to try to connect to local host port 27017 then we would be connecting to our local uh, mongodb instance that is running locally on our system and not from the uh, container here so what we can do we can simply map the ports from the mongodb container to our local machine so what we want to map we want to map 2717 and yes it is 2717 not 27017 we want to map 2717 of our local machine to 27017 of our container that is the mongodb container running in this container so let's save this and let's start the containers again so docker compose up so let me go here so docker compose up hyphen d so we see that uh, the containers are started and let's try to connect to this container that is by providing in a port here so if we provide here 27017 then it would be connected to our local instance of mongodb but we need to provide in a port that is 2717 and now we are connected to this instance that is the container here so let me do show dbs like this and if we simply use this db here that is my db so my db like this so now let's simply do db or let me do show collections here so collections so there is the products collection so we can say db dot products dot find like this and we see that we get back one object here that is the only object we created using our api so this is how we can access the mongodb container or the mongo mongo shell using the port mapping from our local machine to the container here so let me exit out from here and let me clear out the screen so now the last part remains is this that what if you want to develop an application by using docker containers because currently if i do anything inside this file that is if i do it works uh, blah 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 and let me save this application and if we make a request to this uh, index route then that changes are not present here but we want to develop our application by doing changes or by making changes inside our app.js file on our local machine so how do we do that it is pretty simple to do so firstly uh, what we want to do we want to bring down all our containers so we can say docker compose down uh, like this and it is a stopping and let me clear out the screen and let me minimize the terminal and now what i want to do i want to go to my docker compose.yaml file and then i want to map the current volume to the path where the application inside the container resides that is where this application is created inside the docker container so for that what i'm going to do i am going to map my volumes here so i can say volumes like this and then we need to provide in the path of our local machine so the current path of our local machine would be or the application would be dot because our application is inside this folder here so we can say dot should be mapped to that is by putting a colon here should be mapped to this path here that is user source app and because the application is present inside this path inside the container and that is what we are going to map here to this current path here so let me provide it uh, provide this here so let me save this and now there is only one change we need to do inside our docker file and that is instead of doing npm start because npm start simply does this thing here that is a node app.js but we want to use nodemon app.js to start the application in dev mode so we can go to our docker file and let me uh, comment it out and let me provide it one uh, again here that is cmd and here we can simply say npm run dev simply like this to simply start app.js using nodemon so let me save this docker file so let's bring up our terminal here and now the first thing which we need to do is that that we need to shut down all the containers if they are running so it is always better to do docker compose down to make sure that all the containers are stopped and removed so let's do docker compose down and we see that no containers were running here so let me clear out again and now before we can use docker compose up with this new docker file we need to build the image again from this docker file but 
if we did not build the image from docker compose then it would have used the cached image so we need to do docker compose build like this and we simply press enter and it takes a couple of seconds to build the image with this new docker file and now let me clear out again and now let me do docker compose up simply like this and now we see that the containers are created and we should be having our application running using nodemon so we see that the app started using nodemon app.js and we can be sure that if we go to app.js file we see that we have this message here that is it works and if we make a request to this endpoint that is the index route so let's make a request here to the index route we see that we get this message here that is it works so now let's do some changes inside the app.js file so let me close this window here and now here let me say blah 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 and let's save this app.js file so if we open a terminal here we see that the application is restarted due to changes inside the app.js file and now if we make a request here to this index route we see that we get this message here that is it works blah 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 so this is how you develop application using docker containers that is whatever changes you are making here you are making it to the lo locally on your system and those changes are mapped to the docker container using volumes as we have defined here inside the docker compose.yaml file that is inside the api service we define the volumes here that is the current volume or the current path is mapped to user source app which is the place where our application is copied to when we created this docker file so guys this is how you containerize a uh, node.js and mongodb application using docker containers or using docker compose and similarly if you are having a redis container or if your application depends on redis also then you would have simply specified a service here inside this docker compose.yaml file like the way we defined the service for mongodb you would have defined the service for redis as well and then you can pass in the environment variables that are related to redis and then you are good to go and your application would be connected to mongodb and your application would also be connected to redis so this is how all it works so that's all about this video so if you've liked the video do hit the like button if you haven't subscribed to the channel till now do subscribe to the channel so thank you bye bye tata take care and have a good day and have a great day